Today I'll be cooking something really exciting. Beef Wellington. After so many requests, I don't know what it is about this dish. I think maybe it's because it's just so incredibly hard to make, but I've gotten so many requests from so many people to make this dish. Cooking a tenderloin is hard by itself, but when you've wrapped it in many layers, including a puff pastry on the outside that has to be cooked to golden brown perfection, it makes this thing extremely difficult to execute. Let's give it a shot. I actually learned this trick from a chef at a three Michelin star restaurant. You can go double knives if you're chopping up lots of stuff and it goes faster. This should be about good for now. Add two tablespoons of olive oil with your chopped shallots and three cloves of garlic. We just sort of want to gently sweat these until they become lightly translucent. And I'm just going to do this over medium heat so that I don't really give them any color. I didn't think I'd get emotional, but these shallots are making me cry a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my mushrooms. And I'll follow these with a generous dose of salt. Now I really just want to get all the water out of these mushrooms. I'm basically looking to make almost like this paste. Okay, and now that this is cooked down for a while, I'm going to give it a little bit of white wine here. I prefer that to some of the other alcohols that they put in beef Wellington, but you know, to each his own. And then I'll just toss in a few sprays of rosemary. I'm not a big fan of thyme either, so thyme doesn't really add much for me. It's just not a great herb. So rosemary, I think that'll get a nicer flavor out. Goes better with beef to me anyway. Now I just have to cook off that alcohol, kind of get rid of that moisture, and I'm good with this step of the process. And I can already smell that rosemary coming up. Rosemary with mushrooms is just mind-blowingly delicious. So this looks like most of the moisture's come off. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the heat and move on to my beef. So for my beef, I'm gonna start by rolling it liberally in salt and pepper. So first, go ahead and get a bunch of pepper. Don't be shy with this part. You really need to season it up. Make sure it's super well covered. And then I'll go a bunch of salt. And I gotta make sure to do that on all sides. With a cast iron pan, I'm gonna add a little bit of high smoke point oil into the bottom of the pan. Once this oil has lightly started to smoke, I'm gonna go ahead and add my beef and sear it for about a minute and a half on each side. If you're not using an actual timer, a good way to tell how long you've cooked it on each side is just to look at the edges. And because it's such a fat piece of steak, you'll see it cooking in from the outside in. Don't forget to also stand it up and sear it on both ends for a second too. And now we'll just set this aside for a second. We're now actually gonna paint this entire thing in Dijon mustard. Make sure you get a really nice coating on there. It's gonna sort of soak into this beef as we let it sit and wait. Coat the entire piece of beef in Dijon mustard. And now we'll let this rest for a little while. So for the crepe, I'll start with just a little bit of butter in my pan. And I can do this over relatively low to medium heat. Here's the beef all coated in mustard. And here is the mushroom mixture. And now I'm making some quick crepes that'll go around the beef so it doesn't leak. And then I'll add in a bit of my crepe liquid, just enough to sort of coat the bottom of my pan. This is gonna be one gigantic crepe. I'll just roll this around, make sure it's fully coated. This should only take about a minute actually to cook. Now I'll just slowly start peeling the edges of the crepe to see if it's all set. My goal is gonna to be to try to flip it and keep it all in one nice, beautiful piece. Should be at the point where I can go ahead now and flip it. So I'll just try to get under it here, do a nice gentle flip. And that's beautiful. There's my crepe right there. So simple, it took me like two minutes to make. Everyone thinks crepes are hard to make. Not that hard, right? Okay, so to wrap this up, I'm gonna go ahead and put my crepe down on my board. Then I'll put my other half crepe down on the board as well. So I'll layer down my prosciutto right down the line. Again, this is gonna wrap right around our Wellington. Really give it like a nice bed to actually sort of wrap in, you know? And then I'm gonna layer my mushroom. It's exactly how we want it. Put the Wellington right at the start and then very gently and carefully roll this all up. And before cooking, we need it to set. So I'm gonna go ahead and put plastic wrap all around this. Keep it all in this one nice compact unit here. I'm gonna make a quick egg wash over here with two egg yolks and about a tablespoon of water. I'm gonna paint all over my puff pastry where I'm gonna lay my Wellington down. Then I'll unwrap my Wellington and I'll gently place my Wellington at the very start of the puff pastry. Now, just like last time, I'm gonna pick it up 
and gently roll. Once I get to the end, I'm gonna pinch off the edges of my Wellington to sort of close it off. And then I'm gonna gently cut with my knife along the bottom to seal it. I'll do a gentle roll to really seal this up as much as I can. We don't want this thing opening up in the oven. Before sticking it in the oven, give it one last egg wash. This will give us a beautiful golden brown crust. And I'm just gonna bake this at 400 Fahrenheit in a convection oven until I get that beautiful golden brown crust. So I'll gently lift my Wellington onto my cutting board here. To say this looks delicious would be an understatement. Now, if I can, I'll slide it right off my parchment. Voila, we have our beautiful beef Wellington. Now for the true moment, cutting it open. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, I have to say, I'm actually pretty speechless. I have never made anything this complex and it could not have turned out better. It's such a crazy thing and your heart is beating when you're cutting this thing open, but it speaks for itself. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead now and cut another piece out. This is gonna be my slice. So flaky. And lay it down on my plate here. And to finish, I'll just put a little bit of this sauce. All it is is chicken stock and a little bit of butter. And this right here, my friends, is my beef wellington. Honestly, I'll be the first to say it. This was not easy to make. It took me the better part of the day, but I'm excited to dive in and try it. The outer part of the crust is so incredibly flaky, sort of perfectly cooked. I, I'm really happy with the color there, how it turned out. Those mushrooms on the inside have held together really well. I can see that crepe is like acting as this sort of white, sort of airy, eggy divider between the mushrooms, that, that juicy interior, and that really crispy exterior. So the, the crepe is the perfect transition between the outside, which is this crusty, you know, beautiful golden brown crust, and the inside, which is that moist tenderloin kind of enveloped by those mushrooms. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try, and I'll dip it in my sauce here. I've never had beef Wellington, and this is mind blowing. To me, beef Wellington was always one of those things that maybe looks really cool, but probably doesn't taste that good. And you can mark my words right here, this tastes incredible. The meat on the inside is perfectly cooked. It's got everything you could ask for in, in, in food. It's amazing. I'm just gonna end this by saying, wow, it is so, so worth it. Again, I'm always listening to your suggestions. That's why I made Beef Wellington. I didn't think of this myself. I really, really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and share this video with someone that you know would love this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.